All right, everyone, welcome to Tuesday's video. As you can probably guess, we've got a fair amount to chat about today. We're now a good bit closer to our potential title party than we are to the weekend derby wins. We'll probably spend more time looking forward today than back, but we may mention that derby victory once or twice. Yesterday's video certainly had a fair few mentions of it, and as expected, the video went pretty nuts. I think it's maybe already our most viewed since I started Celtic AM. Certainly we'll get there if it's not already there. Plenty of new people have come across the channel and subscribed over the past 24 hours. So to you, I say hello. Good to have you with us. There's plenty of room, so just fire in. And uh, if you're watching this and haven't subscribed yet, go for it. We're trying to get to 7,000 subs by Trophy Day on Saturday because yes, Saturday is going to be Trophy Day. What a wonderful thought. Before we get started today, let's do the sponsor shout out. This video is brought to you by John Lundstrom, making Celtic dreams come true. <coughs> yep, big thanks to our sponsor again. So where are we at this point? Well, we are, we're just kind of counting down the hours now, hopefully until Celtic are crowned champions. It will happen tomorrow night at Rugby Park, should we beat or draw with Kilmarnock. It could actually happen 24 hours earlier tonight. If Rangers fail to beat Dundee at Ibrooks, Celtic will be crowned champions. So yeah, what's the preference? What do we want to happen? I look at it as a bit of a win-win, to be honest. Either they win tonight and we get to seal it ourselves at Rugby Park, and it's kind of more of an event and more exciting than you know, just a bit of a dead rubber, which it will be if they don't beat Dundee, not to say the atmosphere won't be good, uh, or they struggle tonight, and that's always kind of fun to watch. So, yeah, an exciting couple of days ahead, and a wee teaser question for you, if you like this kind of thing. So, not including Celtic Park, Celtic have clinched a league title at five different grounds this century, can you name them? And as it says right at the start, that doesn't include Celtic Park. I will reveal the answers to that tomorrow and um, maybe talk about some of the great title clinchers that we've had. Got a couple of wee news stories I want to go through today before we talk about the, the title picture and all of that stuff. A bit of an update on Cameron Carter-Vickers last night, and it came from the ever-reliable Larry Henry Jr., managing director at SBI Soccer in the States. A reminder that he's pretty close to the CCV camp, so if he says something about Carter-Vickers, it's reliable. So he tweeted last night to say that there is continued interest from several Turkish Super League clubs in Carter Vickers, according to sources. However, CCV is happy with Celtic and has no plans in making a move anytime soon. Now, this may not be a huge update. There's been a lot of chat about certain players leaving the club this summer, Matt O'Reilly being the main one. It's probably one you still expect to move on. There's not really been much chat about Cameron Carter-Vickers. I guess that's just been his Celtic career uh, up to this point. He kind of goes under the radar. He's still, in three seasons, never been nominated as one of the, the four players uh, for the PFA Player of the Year award, which is ridiculous given that over those three years, for me, he's been undoubtedly been the most consistent top-level player in Scottish football. I guess this season it was fair enough because he kind of missed a fair chunk of the season with injury, but we've seen ever since he's come back into the team the difference that it's make. He's just so consistent and so solid. And it's reassuring to hear that, that he sees his immediate future at Celtic. Um, I'm already petrified, I think, for the day when Carter Vickers is no longer around because we've seen this season what happens when he's not around. So the thought of him not being around at all is pretty scary. Hopefully we've got a good few more seasons of him at Celtic, and maybe he'll just end up being one of those players that just stays at Celtic. 
like a bit like Ka- Callum McGregor. Um, I would kind of I'm, I'd be surprised if there wasn't real interest from teams because he's like a top level defender. Maybe teams in England would be put off because he kind of didn't do too well at Spurs originally, but they'd be fools. I mean, the, the guy could play in the English Premier League pretty easily. I think he's he's that level. But in terms of us, my big dream for next season would obviously number one be that Carter Vickers could be fit for the entire season. And I think there's been encouraging signs recently that he's been able to play a number of matches and doesn't appear to have had any fitness concerns. So him having a pre-season next year will be huge. He didn't really have one this season. So going into the season as a first choice defender would be great. And I think if we're able to sign a partner for him, at the same level, that would just make us, you know, pretty unstoppable domestically and would really help us in Europe as well. Now that's easier said than done. Carter Vickers is has been probably the most impressive Celtic defender since Virgil van Dijk. And there's even an argument whether in terms of importance to Celtic even surpasses Virgil van Dijk in terms of, as I say, the importance to the team he was part of. But if we could find Imagine we could find someone like Virgil van Dijk. Again, easier said than done, but that kind of young defender, very talented, on the up to partner Carter Vickers, even just for a couple of seasons, it would just make us, you know, so solid at the back. And I think that's the big hope for me. It's pretty clear that Rodgers doesn't really fancy Narotsky. He obviously doesn't fancy Lager Bielka, Kobayashi and Welsh. I don't think are going to be first team uh, starters for us next season and you know I would I would as much as Liam Scales has done really well I'd hope that he would be a, a squad option next season so I'd like to see us go out and sign a centre back to partner Carter Vickers imagine we had someone of a similar level playing next to Carter Vickers how solid that defence would be yeah that's the dream but the, the story here that Carter Vickers sees his immediate future at Celtic and isn't looking to leave the club at all this summer I guess can only be good news Staying with the kind of transfer-ish theme, uh, the Daily Mail have linked us with a move for Southampton goalkeeper Alex McCarthy this summer. Now, it is worth saying straight away that this report comes from the kind of English Mail team as opposed to someone like Stephen McGowan up here who may have contacts at Celtic. But the report does say that McCarthy, who is 34 years old, is a target for us. He's out of contract this summer with Southampton and he seems to be doing pretty well with them right now. They, I believe, are in the English Championship playoffs trying to get back to the Premier League and McCarthy's going to have a big say on whether they're able to do that or not. He is their goalkeeper at the moment. The um, Irish national goalkeeper, uh, or certainly one of them, Gavin Bazunu, uh, is out until 2025 after rupturing his Achilles tendon around a month ago. So McCarthy is a Southampton keeper at the moment. He's played in the Premier League in the past with the likes of Redden, QPR, Crystal Palace and Southampton. He's also, according to the Mail report, someone that Brendan Rodgers has tried to sign in the past. Not sure if that was at Celtic or at maybe another club like Swansea or Leicester. Um, But it's clear that Rodgers quite likes him. Uh, As I say, he's out of contract in the summer. Liverpool and Newcastle also said to be eyeing McCarthy, but as a backup, it's not totally clear whether Celtic are looking at him as a Joe Hart replacement or possibly a Ben Segrist replacement. I think it's fair to say if we are viewing him as our future number one, um, it would be a little bit of a surprise given that he's 34, I think, most fans expect us to go a bit younger than Joe Hart. Um, I think that's just the general feeling. Maybe someone like McCarthy wouldn't be seen as a, a particularly exciting replacement for Joe Hart. Um, but it is worth saying that this just may be another name thrown out there. We had Liam Kelly at Motherwell last week. That very much did seem like a, a kind of second or third choice signing. And I think we're going to get plenty more names between now and in the end of the season, you know, the goalkeeper stuff is is going to go on for a while yet. I think my main hope is that we get someone in pretty quickly this summer without rushing things. I want us to sign a goalkeeper, um, you know, quickly and efficiently. Certainly no later than mid-July should we be signing our, our new number one. They need to come in, have a full pre-season. 
you know, get to know their their new defence. Uh, I must say, I'm always concerned that Celtic will leave these things to the last minute, and we'll end up with Scott Bain starting, you know, the first couple of league matches of the season. Prove me wrong, Celtic. But yeah, expect plenty more goalkeeper names to come up between now and the signing. In other news, Philippe Clement is making uh, plenty of excuses. He's talking even more about Celtic. That guy just loves speaking about him. I might try and get him on the channel. And he reckons that injuries are the only difference between ourselves and our rivals. Uh, no, six points are the difference, Philippe. He's quoted as saying, for me, there is no gap. If we are both with our full squads, there is no gap. A few weeks ago, everyone said there was no gap. In points, there was also no gap because we niggled back seven points and we went longer in Europe. So when there's full squads, there is, wait for it, no gap. But when you're missing nine players, it's a big thing. I heard a lot when Celtic were missing two players and it made a big difference and it was a big difference when they came back. So, of course, missing nine makes a big difference. I would suggest that 10 points from a possible 12 in the derbies this season would suggest that there is a gap between Celtic and Rangers and anyone would just have to look at that match on Saturday you know, first half when it was 11 v 11 and, and see that it was one team trying to and able to play football and another team just trying to put the ball long. Listen, I could sit and mock Philippe Clement and him losing the plot over the past couple of months, but I don't even want to, to be honest. I just find it all um, just pretty weird how he just seems to be following the Michael Beale guide to trying to get the Rangers support on their side and almost just feeding them lies that they'll certainly buy into. I think the pressure's going to be on him big time for, for the cup final on May the 25th. Uh, and if he doesn't win that, I think it'll be a long way back for him with the, the Rangers support buzzing for that cup final already. Um, and I'm just happy for him to keep underestimating Celtic. If he thinks there's not a gap between our team and their team, then that's great news for us because anyone watching the derbies this season and the game on Saturday and just the way the teams have played over the past two or three months once we've had players back fit would be able to tell that um, that there is a, a, a big gap between the teams or certainly a sizable one uh, and you would certainly fancy us to go and win the league next season as well, especially when we're almost certainly going to strengthen. But yeah, if I was him, I'd be more concerned about Dundee tonight and managing to win that game just to keep the title race going. This could be the final video that we do before Celtic are crowned champions again, uh, which is a pretty nice thought. As I say, I look at it as a win-win. I think regardless of how the Rangers game goes tonight, the atmosphere at Rugby Park tomorrow is going to be exceptional. Certainly that stand behind the net is going to be packed. I dare say there's going to be a few Celtic fans scattered around the rest of the stadium as well, probably a few empty seats as well. Uh, so yeah, just buzzing for that one. Uh, by the way, got a comment in from Tom Flanagan, who's been a, a big supporter of the channel, it must be said. And, and by the way, I, I do see your comments. I do my best to kind of reply to them from time to time when I've got a a minute or two. Um, Tom saying, Morning Hamish, wanted to ask you, not sure if you'll see this, but after the season has ended, do you still do videos or will you come back in August? Uh, well, Tom, this is my full-time job now, so uh, I kind of need to go, uh, keep going over the summer. Yeah, once the season ends, we're going to keep going with the videos Monday to Friday throughout the summer. We'll probably take a couple of weeks break during the Euros. But I think other than that, we'll, we'll just keep going. And as I've said previously, got some big plans for next season that I'll be telling you about over the course of the summer, um, just to do with our, our coverage and stuff. But for now, keep watching everyone, keep enjoying Celtic and yeah, um, rest easy in the thought that we're going to be champions very soon. <laughs>